What up, what up, YouTube Alex? Come back at you with another Custom StarCraft 2 cast. Today, we have a two versus two matchup featuring the Azeroth Kaprulu Hyper War mod. If you're not familiar with this mod, it puts together Warcraft 3, StarCraft 2, and Brood War into one game. It's absolutely hilarious. This match in particular is from a best of one 2v2 tournament series. I've covered a few of these already in the past. It's actually hosted by anyone who is talking right now. Big shout out to him. He is a Spanish speaking content creator. I will leave his links in the description below go ahead and show him some love if you feel so inclined let's go ahead and introduce our players team number one spawning on the bottom right hand side of the map it's our purple zerg player anyone the starcraft 2 zerg player with his allies spawning just to his left it's our blue undead player sergio going up against team number two spawning on the top left hand side of the map it's our pink Protoss player Galahan with his ally just to his right. It's our green Night Elves player Achwachwa. I think I said that right. Forgive me if I said it wrong. And it looks like <laughs> anyone saying Kvas and Sergio says he's going to be rushing ghouls. Is that right? And anyone said Anserio. He's asking if his ally is serious. Is he going to be rushing ghouls? Uh, you know, to put this into perspective, that's basically going to be a worker rush, I feel like. There is an Altar of Darkness already built. It will be building the uh, the Death Knight. So is this going to be a Death Knight with an army of ghouls? That would actually be so hilarious. Taking a look at what anyone is doing, he's throwing down a spawning pool and an expansion, which is already almost finished. We'll see how anyone plays with this because uh, Sergio said he's rushing ghouls and then nothing else. So I'm pretty sure he's serious about that. Taking a look at what team number two is doing, We've got a forge, a kind of a blind forge, which I'm not mad about, and a photon cannon. And given the fact that team number uh, team number two is going to be rushed, this isn't a bad plan. Also, I've been thinking about the meta for this mod because the Warcraft three factions have heroes, and the Starcraft two factions and Brood War factions do not. So building some static defense in the early game might not be a bad idea. You know, going blind defense against what is inevitably going to be a hero rushing to your base at potentially three minutes into the game. Excuse me. So, yeah, we've got a Keeper of the Grove. This isn't going to be necessarily too crazy, but the Zerglings are on their way as well as the Death Knight with his army of ghouls. That is hilarious. And what do we have on the minimap as well? We have what is going to be a gateway proxy. So we're going to have a warp gate proxy in response to this. Oh, man. And that's a blind proxy because team number two has no idea that they're getting rushed until uh, right about now. That is hilarious. All the Zerglings do go down, unfortunately. This Death Knight is still alive with an army of ghouls. That is actually so hilarious to me. Luckily for team number two, with those photon cannons, we'll actually stay in this game. There's no way. There's no way the undead breaks this. There's no way, right? The Keeper of the Grove did summon a couple tree ants, which do go down. The Huntress, <laughs> this Huntress is so close to death. It's actually hilarious. One HP ultimately will go down. But the Night Elves forcing the retreat on the undead player. That is actually hilarious. That was a good attempt. That was a good attempt. I won't lie. The warp gate is finished, though. And now I think team number two is going to be able to retaliate relatively safely. Let's take a look at the units. We got what is... 31 drones and nothing else for our purple zerg player we have 13 ghouls and a death knight <laughs> for our blue undead player and team number two is looking really strong man we have six huntresses we have the keeper of the grove for the night elf player we have six zealots for the protoss player and there's also a dark shrine on the way from our protoss player as well this is going to be brutal for team number one an action-packed game already, and we're at 4 minutes and 30, now 4 minutes and 40 seconds into the game. The transfuses on these, <laughs> on these queens, desperate to try and keep each other alive, but unfortunately dying at the hands of the Night Elves, or at the bows of the Night Elves. What are they throwing? I guess Glaives is what, what, they're, what they're throwing. I'm not entirely sure, man, and my brain just broke. And here we go. We have the Zealots on the back of this. The Dark Shrine is just about three quarters of the way done. So there are going to be some dark, some dark elves. What am I saying? Some dark Templar. I was looking at elves and then my brain really broke. 
By the way, you guys, if you are new to my channel, I cast custom StarCraft II content like this all the time. If you want me to cast any of your own games, please join my Discord. I would love to cast some of your games. And if you want to see more content like this, well, consider subscribing to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Man, I really don't know what team number uh, what team number one can do about this. This is a lot of speed links. To be fair, though, anyone got pushed into a little bit of a corner. Zealot Charge is just about to be finished, and this is going to change the game a lot. The Zealots will be able to close the distance on all this ranged stuff. I like the positioning on the spine crawlers behind the uh, the spirit towers. And wait a minute, no, don't move these forward. This is too early. Anyone run these back? And yes, he decides. Okay, you know what? Maybe I will run these back. You got to burrow the spine crawler, man. Oh no, it does survive somehow. The Dark Templar are are in the main base. Luckily, though, the Spirit Towers are detectors. But if these Dark Templar run too far forward, they will be invisible. <laughs> oh, man. The macro hatchery. It looks like anyone deciding that he has to build a macro hatchery now because his natural base was destroyed. And officially, night has fallen. So the night elves will be able to shadow meld <laughs> into the night. Uh, which, you know, if you're not familiar, shadow melding does allow the night elf units to become invisible if they hold still. It's actually such a cool mechanic. We have some glaive throwers as well. Oh, no. And this is such a big summon. How many treants is that? That is six treants summoned by the Keeper of the Grove? Are you serious? Are you serious right now? They all go down, but those are basically free units. Yes, they do cost energy, but they don't cost anything other than that. This hatchery is going to be morphing into a lair, which is interesting that the uh, the macro hatchery is morphing into the lair and not the main mining hatchery. I feel like this one is a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more vulnerable. It doesn't matter too much ultimately because this is a pretty decent wall. Taking a look, what do we have here? We have another... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Galahan, he's just... He's expanding forward. I just realized uh, team number two hasn't expanded at all. They just countered cheese with an absolute one base all in from each player up until now. That is so funny. Another gateway on the back of this. I'm not entirely sure. There's not really a reason to be warping in warp gate so close to your enemy. Uh, I mean, if you want to expand here, that's great. But all you really need is a pylon, and then you can build your warp gates back home. That's a lot safer, ultimately. But to be fair, team number two is looking pretty strong right now. Keep in mind that they're just now expanding, though. So as long as team number two can hold this off, they're still technically in this game. But this is a really scary-looking army. I mean, three Archons is not something, not something to scoff at, ladies and gentlemen. This is... This is looking really, really crazy. <laughs> I'm having trouble deciding where to look on the map. I mean, right now, it's definitely this engagement. This is a really scary looking army. Taking a look at the units tab. I mean, anyone's only got 22 drones left. How many ghouls does our blue, does our blue undead player have, actually? Where are the ghouls, man? Oh, here they are. 14 ghouls. Okay. Uh, compared to a really decent, I mean, a half-decent economy. There's only 16 Wisp uh, for the Night Elf player. Anyone asking if they should go. But you have to consolidate your army, man. Anyone's kind of going with, like, one versus two on the right-hand side of this engagement. Meanwhile, Sergio's kind of going for, like, a one versus, well, more like a 1v1 on the left-hand side. Anyone deciding, hey, you know what? That's the game. Throwing out the GG, giving the victory to team number two. What a hilarious, cheesy match. But that was a short one, so we're going to cast one more from the series. Stay tuned, and I'll be right back. All right, you guys, welcome to game number two. Keep in mind, this is a best of one series, so <laughs> we have a fresh set of players. Let's go ahead and introduce our new team, spawning on the top right-hand side of the map, team number one, with our blue Protoss player, Imperio. His ally spawning just his left. It's our teal undead player, Rhodey. Going up against team number two, spawning on the bottom left-hand side of the map. It's our red undead player and Salagon with his ally spawning just to his left. It's our pink Protoss player, Alaki. And we already see, I think, some shenanigans on the mini-map. This is what... We have two acolytes on the way, followed by a third acolyte and a probe. What is going on? Are we seeing some cheese right now? We must be. Is this an all-in with acolytes and, like, a cannon rush? No, I don't think this is a cannon rush. This is not a cannon rush. 
But nonetheless, we have two Acolytes coming in to do some, I'm assuming, harassment for the Mineral Line. For the blue Protoss player, Imperio reacting to this by throwing down a Forge. I am so confused. If you can't hear it in my voice, Imperio throwing down the Panic Forge. She's like, bruh, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting cheesed. One probe going down, one Acolyte going down. But Imperio, I think, doing a good job at not overreacting. He's not pulling his entire Mineral Line, and he's taking out all of the Acolytes and only losing a single probe. I say he's not overreacting, but at the same time, he did throw down a Panic Forge. And wait a minute, Imperio, that's not your assimilator. And Aleki throwing down a gas harassment for his blue opponent. That is hilarious. This probe running for its life. It's like, hey, look, my job is done. But I think going in for the scout nonetheless. Now, uh, one thing I would do at this point, I don't know, man. I think I would feel relatively safe that we're not getting cheese. Like, if I was team number one, I'd be like, okay, that was only two Acolytes, and we have a gas harassment, but we don't have any pylons. This probe is running around being kind of a nuisance, but it's not being too scary. I mean, they didn't scout team number two, to be fair, but you, you would see cannons by now. Absolutely, you'd be seeing cannons. There is a photon cannon coming down in the kind of, like, natural base like wall i guess you should say for the uh for team number one and kind of like what i was saying in game number one i feel like the meta for kind of warcraft 3 versus starcraft it makes kind of some sense to be throwing down some sort of static defense in your wall just because the uh the hero units for warcraft are so crazy i mean look at this we have the death knight level one with 445 health that is so insane, bro. That is so insane. Damage 25 to 35. I mean, I'm assuming this uh, this Death Knight from Rhodey is going to be doing some tremendous damage to either the Undead or Protoss player, depending on which way he goes. Decides to go for the Protoss player, bypasses the, uh, <laughs> bypasses the Stalkers, and starts running to the Mineral Line for the pink Protoss player. That is hilarious. Let's take a look at the production tab. What do we have on the production tab? We have an Oracle on the way. I like that. We have an Oracle for our pink Protoss player. But man, look at this. We have three Stalkers. The Death Knight is just now at half HP. Took out like what? Maybe five or six workers? That is so insane. Look at this. Four Stalkers finally taking out that Death Knight, but not after losing a ton of economy. Keep in mind, this is in the alpha state. So there's going to be a lot of balancing, I think, to be done as the developers work on this mod. So keep that in mind. I mean, this mod is definitely something that you can balance. It's just going to take some work. I mean, the, the, the devs already put so much work into this mod that I'm confident that this mod is going to find a good state eventually. I think it's already in a great state. I mean, in terms of casting it, it's a ton of fun. Anyway, the Oracle flying across the map. Let's see what we have in terms of defense for our uh, Teal Undead player, Rhodey. The Spirit Tower and the Nerubian Tower both shoot up. Will absolutely destroy that Oracle. One ghoul does go down, but at the cost of an Oracle, that is not ideal. We have another Oracle on the way, but <laughs> Aleki realizing he has to realize that he can't go into the main base for the blue, uh, the blue undead player. He could go to the main base for the Protoss player, though. That's kind of what I would do, uh, and maybe I would kill this acolyte. Oh no. The Stasis Ward does proc, capturing four units, including the Death Knight. So that is not a bad pickup, not at all. There's some ghouls also kind of running around in the middle of the map. I like that they were on the Zelnaga Watchtower, but now they're moving out, and this is not enough. This is not enough units to take out what is an absolutely stacked army for team number one. There's no way. These stalkers, they're not even scared. They're like, yep, undead. We have some ghouls. Yeah, they're kind of weird. We've never seen undead in the StarCraft universe before, but uh, yeah, we can take out these walking skeletons. Why not? Oh, man. I mean, team number two has to stack their armies because right now they're kind of moving in, like, separately, one at a time. Unless they were doing some sort of harassment in the mineral lines for their opponents, what you want to do is stack your army and kind of move together as one. That is the biggest issue I see in team matchups is you find a lot of situations where one person is, like, 1v2-ing because their allies not moving with them. 
I love this though. The Crypt Fiends, basically like the Stalkers for the Undead. They do have 10 less HP total than the Stalker because the Stalker has what, 80, 80, 80 health and 80 shields. Yep, so 160 total. And speaking of not stacking your units, now team number one are kind of moving independently from each other. You gotta stack your units, guys, because one bad engagement is really going to turn the tide of this game, man. We have an undead uh, death knight, actually. Excuse me. Let me take a look at the units. Red also has a death knight. And a big engagement in the middle of the map. The two death knights going at each other. I like how the red one looks, man. It looks super cool. Ultimately, though, team number two is retreating, realizing, hey, look, this is a huge army. I like the warp prism mixed in with this, though. This will allow Alaki to reinforce the pink Protoss army. This is so much macro <laughs> being built. Oh, man. Team number two building a lot of macro in the natural base location. A stasis ward. I think it was on the cliff capturing what are five crypt fiends. And the warp prism from blue as well. Imperio, I like that a lot. But these stalkers do have blink now. I think, uh, no. No, okay. So only the pink stalkers have blink. The blue stalkers don't have blink. That is going to be huge. Pink really trying to attack this Death Knight. The Death Knight does proc Death Coil, though, <laughs> uh, which does allow him to heal just a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. And ultimately, this Death Knight will survive. Not bad at all, Rhodey. Great retreat. Oh, wait, just as I said it, just as I said it, the Death Knight goes down. Rest in peace, Death Knight. You will be seen relatively soon. <laughs> a big engagement here i think team number two should retreat though we have some really good micro from our pink protoss player but it's just it's a 2v1 right now and you can't win that especially with the uh with the immortal how many kills does this have only one kill but the immortals against stalkers it's just like the stalkers are made of paper i mean the blink will help just a little bit but the immortals are just so so good so good against stalkers a lot of ghouls coming in to attack this necropolis unfortunately these ghouls are a bit squishy will be forced to retreat great reaction time from team number two taking a look at the units as well actually we have 43 workers for our pink protoss player 72 ghouls for our red undead player and only 11 ghouls for our teal undead player oh man 11 ghouls i mean all things considered he's got pretty decent macro but he's really only mining off one base and not even a fully saturated base you gotta keep you gotta keep making ghouls man and what do we have for our blue protoss player 45 probes so uh the protoss players in this game relatively evenly matched but i mean look at this 80 88 ghouls for our red undead player compared to the uh 12 ghouls for our teal undead player these ghouls running around <laughs> trying to do some sort of damage, but ultimately getting some good scouting information. Not that bad. And they'll be running into the mineral line for the teal undead player taking out, like, what, two ghouls? To be fair, our red uh, our red undead player in Salagon has enough ghouls to spare. Let's just say the least. Or let's just say the least. What am I saying? To say the least. You guys, I'm tired. It's late for me. I'm casting way later than normal. That's my excuse. It's a bad one, but it's an excuse. <laughs> this is a big warping of units, though, and I like this. Mixing up a couple Void Rays. Void Rays are an interesting unit. They're not necessarily like an endgame unit. They're not a great unit, but I do find if I mix in a couple Void Rays, my DPS is not sad about it, but they're a really expensive unit. That's the only thing about the Void Rays. They're really expensive. Some Archons on the back of this. Not bad, especially given the fact that the Undead are mostly biological, I believe. Yep. Some Gargoyles from, <laughs> from Ensalagon attacking all these probes. A little bit of a late reaction from Imperio. Now, what I would do in this situation, maybe, is instead of building Void Rays, I would go for Phoenixes. I would treat these like Mutas and go for Phoenixes because the Phoenixes have a lot more kind of like 
offensive utility against this kind of play, or more defensive, I should say. A big push of pink Protoss units moving to the blue Protoss base, base number three. And meanwhile, these <laughs> these gargoyles doing a lot of damage to the pink, or sorry, to the teal undead army. And now it's looking like team number two is suddenly ahead. This is insane. I, I, I like this. The gargoyles mixed in with this army. This is exactly what I'm talking about in, the, in a team game. You want to be stacked. You want to have your armies basically on top of each other, man. <laughs> and this is also exactly what I'm saying. I mean, it's not an ideal position to be in for team number one, but you have the crypt fiends on the left-hand side, and you have the blue Protoss army on the right-hand side. Granted, this is a nice wall to be behind, but you're effectively fighting almost one at a time. Yes, you're throwing down DPS at the same time, but your armies are separated. But there wasn't a lot that Teal could do in that situation. I mean, they were kind of stuck. If they walked their army behind this wall, they would have lost all, the, all their Crypt Fiends, like, right away. Oh, man, this is a really, really good engagement for team number one. Or, sorry, team number two, actually. And I like this. Mixing up the ghouls with the gargoyles. This necropolis will definitely go down. The wall is broken. Daylight is coming, which is hilarious. So we were in nighttime, and look at that. The screen is so bright. Imperio throwing out the GG, realizing that there's nothing he can do. Leaving the game. It looks like Teal is still in this game. We'll see how long Rody decides to stay. I mean, Rody can control his allies' units now, but I'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty sure Rody's gone. Rody's definitely dead. And Rody leaving the game as well, giving the victory to team number two. What a crazy finish. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, please consider shooting me a like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want me to cast any of your own games, I will leave my email and discord in the description below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.